Sight grind to training. Sight grind to training. The second and final phase of the Sight Grinder workflow is the content phase. In the content phase, we will create a Sight Grinder site in the Sight Grinder plugin window. We will deploy one or more of our pages to the site. We will edit page content in the browser based content manager. And finally, we'll upload our pages or save them out to work with in other tools. Before we can move our pages into the content phase and out onto the internet, we'll need to tell SiteGrinder where the final pages should reside on our hard disk and set a few other options. To do this, we'll create a new SiteGrinder site. First, we open the SiteGrinder plugin window and switch to the Build and Deploy tab. We can find the new site command both in the Sites menu and in the Deploy to pop-up menu in the lower right. The new site command presents us with the new site window. First, we'll give the site a name. Because of the way SiteGrinder uses this name, it cannot contain spaces or certain other special characters. We then need to tell SiteGrinder where to create the site files on our hard disk by clicking on the Browse button and selecting a folder. We can also create a new folder in this dialog if we need to. There are a few other options to consider in this window. The CMS option, which stands for Content Management System, defaults to local only. This means that we'll be able to use SiteGrinder's Content Manager to edit page content right in the browser window, but only as long as those pages are on our local computer and the SiteGrinder engine application is running. If we or our clients want to be able to edit these pages in a browser window using any web-connected computer, we would select the Remote CMS option instead. Remote CMS requires the optional SiteGrinder Control add-on available from Media Lab when you purchase or as an upgrade later. If the control add-on is not activated, you will not be able to select the remote CMS option. At this time, SiteGrinder's remote CMS also requires that your web server supports PHP, though support for other technologies like ASP is in the works. The e-commerce option allows us to select a shopping cart system for use with any e-commerce buttons or forms we created in Photoshop. This feature requires the SiteGrinder Commerce add-on and won't be selectable if that add-on is not activated. Finally, there are a few advanced options we can reveal by clicking this disclosure arrow. Be careful when choosing these settings because most of them can't be changed later. Luckily, it only takes one button press to deploy pages to a site, so you can always make a new site with different settings and deploy again. Once we have created a site, SiteGrinder will add its name to the Site menu and the Deploy To menu. Deploying builds our pages to the local site folder that we selected when we created the site. The deploy controls are organized on the right half of the build and deploy panel. The deployed column tells us when, if ever, each of our pages was last deployed. We select which pages SiteGrinder will deploy this time using these checkboxes. Pages aren't bound to any particular site. We can deploy any page to as many sites as we like. We can deploy pages from different Photoshop files to the same site. And finally, deployed pages aren't set in stone. We can go back to the Photoshop document or the design manager to make changes and then redeploy the same page to the same site again. The Deploy What menu even allows advanced users to change only the content or only the layout of the site when deploying. Most of the time, we won't change this menu from its default selection. The Deploy To menu allows us to make a new site or select an existing site. The Deploy button will not be clickable until we have selected a site and have at least one page chosen for deployment. After we click the Deploy button, SiteGrinder opens the Content Manager in our default browser. The deploy process usually only takes a few seconds. The Content Manager looks and behaves a lot like the Design Manager. The controls sit on the left side of the browser display, and the first thing we usually do is select a page to edit from the page list in the upper left. Once we select a page, it will almost magically appear in the main window on the right. 
appropriate edit controls will display lower down in the content manager area. Which specific controls appear depends on what kinds of elements are present on the page. Every page will have some editable content. Any type layer that we export as real CSS text from Photoshop is automatically editable here in the content manager right in the browser window. Type layers and others are listed in the editable content panel. As with the design manager, the editable items highlight on the page as we roll over them in the content manager control to make them easy to find. When we select one of the text areas and click the edit button, we can use the word processor control on the contents. If we are experts, or maybe just foolhardy, we can actually edit the raw HTML. In a similar fashion, we can edit all sorts of other page elements. External media elements, like videos for example, are listed in the external media panel. In the pages area, I'll select a different page that has an external media element. Clicking in the media column next to the layer name from Photoshop opens up the external media importer panel. We can select the type of media we want to import and then locate the file or folder representing that media. Media files on your local computer need to be moved to anywhere inside your site folder before importing. I moved this video to a folder I created inside my site folder earlier. We can edit almost any of our content layers here. We can set links for buttons and menu items. We can edit page titles. We can swap content images with new images. We can add or arrange gallery images, and we can configure e-commerce forms and buttons. One of the most powerful things we can do in the Content Manager is to create new pages based on existing ones. To do this, we choose a new page from the Content Manager's file menu. In the dialog that appears, we select a page to copy to create our new page, and optionally, we can even have SiteGrinder add a new menu item to one of our existing menus to link to the new page. We can use the Content Manager editing controls to customize the content of the new page without affecting the content of the page we duplicated. Once we have completed the content of our pages, it is time to upload or save them out to work with in other tools. If we want to upload our pages to a web host, we'll need to tell SiteGrinder how to access the web server so it can transfer our files to it. We tell SiteGrinder the settings for connecting to our remote server using the Connection Settings command in the Upload menu. Once we've done this, we will have two choices, upload changes or upload everything. Upload changes is almost always what we'll want to select because it will only upload files that have changed since the last time we uploaded and is therefore much quicker. Once we've uploaded, we are free to make more changes in the content manager and upload again. We can even go all the way back to Photoshop, make a change, rebuild, make some more changes in the design manager, redeploy, and re-upload. If we need to work with our SiteGrinder pages in another tool, like Dreamweaver, we can save the site out to another folder as what we call static pages. These saved static pages can be edited in any third-party site tool, but they can no longer be managed or uploaded using SiteGrinder's tools. Now that you've finished this tour of the SiteGrinder workflow, it's just a matter of learning what hints and layers you need to employ to create the particular elements you want on your site. At this point, we recommend proceeding to the Essentials Guides covering the features shared by almost every site. These are Page Creation and Management, Web Text, and Hyperlinking.